Recall in 6.3 part A we looked at the basics of sine and cosine. In 6.3 part B we looked at how to give a function and in particular we messed with amplitude, shoot, there we go, amplitude and vertical shift. In part C, which we're going to talk about now, we're going to now look at period and horizontal shift. An important thing for period is to understand angular speed. If you do not go back and review those videos, that's in section 6.2. Make sure you know that really well before watching these following videos. All right, so we still have Steve. Steve is still on his fan. His fan still has a radius of two feet, and his fan is still 0.5 feet off the table, which, remember, gave us the function up above of h, which equals m of theta equals 2 sine theta plus 2.5. Well now we're gonna add another little bit of information that in one rotation it takes Steve three seconds. This means that Steve's angular speed omega is 2 pi radians per second. The reason we like this is because if we know Steve's angular speed, 2 pi radians per second, or I'm sorry, 2 pi radians per 3 seconds, there we go, 2 pi over 3, we can figure out his, how many radians he's gone if we know how much time has passed. In 3 seconds, he's gone 2 pi radians. In 6 seconds, he's gone 4 pi radians. In one second, he's gone 2 pi over 3 radians. Having the speed of 2 pi over 3 radians is like having a linear speed of, let's say, 40 miles per hour. If you have a linear speed of 40 miles per hour and you know how many hours someone's been traveling, you can just multiply the two numbers together and it will give you distance. The same idea applies here. If we know angular speed and we know how long Steve has been traveling, we can figure out what angle he swept out. This means that at any given time, theta equals the angular speed times the time, or in this case, 2 pi over 3 times t, where, yes, we have a new variable, so t equals time on fan in seconds. This gives us a new function where Steve's height as a function of time it's still going to be sine, but we're going to take out this theta and put in 2 pi over 3t. We still want to multiply by the amplitude, and we still want to add 2.5 to the end. So basically, what's happening in our function is when we plug in time, we multiply by the angular speed, and that tells us what angle Steve has swept out. That number goes into our sine function and it tells us Steve's vertical height in radii. That number, there we go, gets multiplied by 2 to give us vertical height in feet and that whole number we add 2.5 to it so that we're getting the vertical height above the table not just the center line. Upshot is if you're doing it in terms of time instead of angle measure, figure out your angular speed. And that's the coefficient on your input. Okay, time for the graph. Uh, 